You're listening to Sit, Stay, Learn with Dr. Adrian Wright, a veterinary podcast brought to you by Ardent Animal Health. Regenerative medicine is one of the fastest growing fields with new papers published every single day. As a busy mom of two, I am guilty of not making the time to keep up with the research and I think a lot of other veterinary professionals are in the same situation. My name is Dr. Adrian Wright and welcome to Sit, Stay, Learn, a short podcast where I review regenerative medicine uses in veterinary science. Each episode, I break down a paper and then we spend 10 to 15 minutes just giving you the details that you need to know to feel like you're staying up to date with the research. For today's paper, I chose one sent over by our technical services veterinarian, Dr. Larry Snyder. If you haven't had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Snyder, I would highly recommend it. He has well over 20 years of regenerative medicine experience as a practicing veterinarian and loves to tackle your case questions. To get to this paper, this is a case study for the use of platelet-rich plasma or PRP for the treatment of prostatic cysts in dogs. This paper comes from researchers in Italy and was published in the Canadian Journal of Veterinary Research in 2018. To highlight the study design, the study objective was to evaluate the role of PRP in the treatment of prostatic cysts in dogs. Sample size was 10 adult mixed breed male dogs. The age range was four to seven years old, median of five and a half years. Weight ranged from 22 kilograms to 35 kilograms, with the median being about 26. All dogs had a physical exam and an ultrasound of the genital tract to check for any prostate conditions prior to treatment. They did a single injection of PRP, and the follow-up was 6, 12, 24, and 60 days post-treatment. So let's dive into the topic just a little bit. Abnormalities of the canine prostate gland, particularly focusing on benign hyperplasia in cysts, are frequent in male dogs over the age of five. In medium to large breed dogs, incidence can be as high as 80%. The most frequent complication of prostatic cysts is their shift into abscesses, which has severe consequences on the health of the dog. In particular, Prostatic cysts can impact 14% of large breed males, with 42% of those cases having bacterial contamination, which can then be transferred to the semen. This is a serious and real deterrent for semen production for artificial insemination. The most common treatment for prostatic disease is chemical castration and orchiectomy. Therapeutic approach for prostatic cysts is ultrasound-guided drainage with alcohol injection in that cystic cavity, reduction surgery, and omenalization. Orchiectomy together with medical, surgical, and many invasive treatments are suitable procedures, but chemical castration involves periodic administration of hormonal drugs. Ultrasound-guided drainage alone has high recurrence. Adding alcohol sclerotherapy may reduce fluid secretory activity of the epithelial cells, but it may also increase persistent cysts for a long time after the treatment. Surgical reduction and omenalization are invasive procedures that expose the dog to infection and other complications. Out of all of these treatment options, none of them are completely efficient, long-lasting, and free of complications. The choice of PRP in this case is honestly a little obscure. I don't know that that's the first thing my mind would go to, but let's kind of dive into their rationale. So the biological action of PRP comes from the degranulation of the alpha granules within the platelets, which are concentrated three to five times baseline platelet values in the blood. Through this mechanism, you have active release of several growth factors, enzymes, and other bioactive compounds. So by injecting the PRP, you are able to deliver a highly concentrated dose of those growth factors and other components that have been shown to be involved in cell signaling, cell replication, cell differentiation, angiogenesis, antibacterial activity, extracellular matrix syntheses, and anti-inflammatory properties. 
At this time the paper was published, there was no definitive evidence to support the application of PRP for the treatment of prostatic cysts in the literature, which is what I think makes this paper so unique and so powerful. So let's talk about the dogs a little bit. Ten adult male dogs. I think for a case study, a sample size of 10 is actually quite large. And they also have some unique controls, which we'll talk about in just a minute. All the dogs were selected based on the presence of cystic lesions identified on an ultrasound of the prostate gland. Four dogs had a single cyst, five dogs had two cysts, and one dog had three cysts. The diameter of the left lobe cysts ranged from one to two and a half square centimeters and the drained volume from those cysts ranged from 0.9 mils um, up to 2.3 mils. The diameter of the right lobe cysts ranged from 2 to 2.5 square centimeters, and that drained volume ranged from 1.5 to 2.1 mils. For dogs with multiple cysts, only one of the cysts was injected and the others acted as a control, which is what I think is pretty brilliant about this paper is they didn't have the additional control dogs, but they still made a way to fit controls into the case study. The volume of PRP that was injected varied from dog to dog, but it was calculated the same for each dog. So it was calculated as half of the volume drained from that cyst that's being injected. The average PRP volume injected was 0.9 mils for both the left and the right lobes. For the injection, autologous whole blood was collected for PRP preparation. They did their preparation a little differently. They do capture a platelet count and then they adjust the volume afterwards to get in that range of a three to five times concentration. I do not see any evidence of platelet activation in their protocol which really could diminish the amount of growth factors delivered at the site. You really can't depend on injecting whole platelets into the body and then allowing the body to lyse those platelets. I think activation is a key step to get a therapeutic approach. So real quick, I do just want to just note here, if you use Ardent's PRP kit, this process would be a lot more streamlined. You don't need to take a baseline platelet value. You would have a tech obtain 9 to 36 mils of whole blood you follow the very quick processing kit. It takes about 45 minutes, and some of that time is equipment time. Then you would have three to four mils of PRP concentrated at the three to five times and then activated to harness the full therapeutic potential. The dogs were then anesthetized, the diameter of the cyst was measured, and then ultrasound guided drainage was performed before PRP introduction. The cystic fluid was also analyzed. The PRP volume, again, calculated to be half the volume of drained fluid from that cyst, was injected using ultrasound guidance and a 21-gauge spinal needle. Dogs were followed up with at 6, 12, 24, and 60 days after the treatment. So if you want to look at the results a little bit, after injection, ultrasound showed that the cystic cavities were virtual and vague after the drainage. After PRP injection, cysts appeared um, hypoechoic. Cystic fluid was clear and colorless with few cells, and it was sterile. The day six evaluation, you have hypoechoic appearance of the cyst that was maintained and the margins were identifiable. Day 12 evaluation, the cystic cavities were visible with 50% reduction in volume compared to previous measurements. That's huge. So we're already seeing therapeutic benefit as early as 12 days. Day 24 and 60 evaluations, the cysts were no longer detectable by ultrasound. Of the 10 dogs used in the study, an 11-year-old dog that had three cysts, two in the left lobe, one in the right, that dog did have to be euthanized after one year due to a fibroblastic sarcoma oral tumor. The prostate was removed and fixed in formalin. There were only two cysts present. The third that had been injected in the right lobe was not detectable. The cystic lesion that had been injected showed a collapsed wall with poor secretions. The cystic wall was lined with a simple cuboidal epithelium and stratified in some points. The untreated cysts were lined with a stratified cuboidal epithelium surrounded by a dense connective tissue wall and smooth muscle fibers. 
No adverse events were reported in this study. All therapies were very well tolerated. So in conclusion, despite being a small sample size, this case study indicates that PRP therapy in combination with ultrasound-guided drainage may be an innovative therapeutic alternative to significantly reduce the average recurrence rate of prostatic cysts. In this study, all dogs responded to PRP therapy with cysts being undetectable at day 24 and 60. Cysts did not reoccur in the two-month evaluation period. And if you even look back to the dog that was euthanized one year later, you still don't see that cyst in the right lobe that was treated. It was observed that control cyst showed a thick connective layer below the epithelial lining of the cavity as a possible result of the, of the inflammation. There is ample evidence noting that excess or chronic inflammation inhibits regeneration and tissue repair. And from this finding, it makes sense that PRP may act by relieving the inflammation, allowing the body to heal itself. The hypothesis from this paper was that PRP promoted or prompted the rearrangement of cystic tissue. The connective capsule surrounding the epithelial lining of the cyst disappeared so that the fluid could be reabsorbed from the surrounding tissue and the tissue fluid balance could be restored. Specifically, the cystic cavity virtually disappeared and only a small remnant of the cystic wall with very poor secretions was visible at two months follow-up. Overall, I think this is exciting. Tough to find a case study where all subjects benefit in such a positive manner. Still, I think a study with larger sample sizes and more controls would be ideal to validate the findings. And that's all for today. So what are your thoughts on the treatment of prostatic cysts with PRP? For the text version of this episode, you can head to our blog. If you have questions on this episode or a paper you'd like for me to review, you can always email me at adrian at ardentanimalhealth.com. I hope you all have a wonderful week. See you next time.